with the civil enforcement tools, it's on the balance of probability. It doesn't need to meet, meet a criminal threshold. So it's invaluable to us because a lot of ASB doesn't involve crime, but it's that persistent drip, drip, drip effect. It's the impact it has on somebody. And before you could use these sort of tools, it was people had to sort of learn to live with it, but they don't know. A lot of problems start before police are ever involved and by the time it gets to police involvement you're, you're sort of looking at a bigger problem. We prefer early intervention and prevention than um, enforcement. Early intervention may be looking at support networks, for example a young person trying to divert their behaviour into diversionary schemes. We look at the support mechanisms around vulnerability and that is whether they're the offender or the victim. So we take a harm-centred approach to, to everyone that's involved in that case and ensure that they are adequately receiving the support they should be. Maybe this is our case management system for antisocial behaviour and low level vulnerability. So the ASARA model is built into that system. So every time an officer uses that system, they're going through um, each stage of the process. They have an objective of what they want to achieve, how and when, and then it takes them through the scanning process where they start to look at what data they have. They may call in partner agencies to provide data as well. Then the analysis stage is looking at the data, seeing what uh, any path any uh, peak times for example days of the week and then they start to look at their responses so what are they going to do to solve that problem once the responses are um, actioned they will then come back to the assessment to look at what has worked what has worked well what would we do differently what have we learned from the process and what can we share as best practice a lot of the time you're not going to fix it but there's a lot we can do with Asara to be able to say Right, there's gaps here, there's gaps here, there's gaps here. We need to fill, this is causing this, this is causing this. And it gives us that way of thinking logically and really looking at a problem solving approach to be able to say who else can be, be involved. We look at everything holistically with the ASARA model rather than we need that to stop now. The likelihood is then it's, we're going to get repeat offenders and repeat victims. So we use that to say, how can we do this now and, and give that resolution that has got legs rather than there's a stick in plaster and it's solved it for today. A lot of it's the emphasis on, we're giving you the opportunity to change and to stop this behavior. And we always give them that with words of advice or a letter of expectation. We would outline the behaviour that is not acceptable and it gives them an outline of behaviours that are acceptable by things they can do to avoid it. And that's given them the opportunity to say, take this, we urge you to take this opportunity to, to stop and think of how your behaviour is impacting on your neighbour or the community. That's been crucial to the way we've worked as a force and a team because it's given people the opportunity not to be criminalised. Until you can understand the problem and maybe some of the reasons why it's happening, you can't prevent it. Look at the bigger picture, so don't just concentrate on the offender and the enforcement side of the offender. Look at everybody and what they all need as individuals. Um, look at the location, so does it need to have improved lighting, does there need to be improved security? So rather than just from a police perspective think enforcement, we've got tools and powers, look at everything before you get to that stage. So you try and prevent rather than enforce. I think it's really important that our neighbourhood police teams um, have got the capacity to achieve what we want them to um, work towards, which is long-term problem solving. By giving them the skills, you've given them the capability, but what we need to ensure is they've got the time and space to pursue those pure neighbourhood activities to allow them to achieve problem solving uh, and the other activities. Um, is it achievable all the time? I think we're realistic that you know when there's a major incident and we need our neighbourhood police teams to help with cordons or with house-to-house -house inquiries, then yes, that's all hands on deck. But generally, we will try and give them time and space um, to achieve those neighbourhood objectives.